Hi everyone and welcome back to our JRPG series. This is episode 4. Now in the last episode we started work on our UI and getting a UI to show up when it's the player's turn. Now we're going to fill out that player's turn with some UI that is going to show the list of options that they can do like attack, magic and so on and so forth. These will be buttons that the player can click on and it will show them options of what they can do and who to target. So let's get started on creating this new system. So we're now going to get our units here to start their turn taking process so we're going to go into our combat component and in here we're going to make another function and this function is going to be that request for a turn so we call this one request turn and the request turn we're going to get game mode and we're going to cast to our battle game mode and then from there, we're going to call the turn request function we made way back at the start. And the unit here is going to be the unit characters assigned to this combat component. Put that in like so. Uh, we now want to go to begin battle on here and we're going to set up a timer. So we're going to drag this out, do set timer by function name. And we're going to put in the name of the function request turn. The ob object here will be self. So that's where the function belongs. And the time here is uh, really up to you what you want to put in here. But essentially what we're going to do is use a stat to help determine this value. So let's set up the available stats we have for our character. We're going to have uh, a few. We're going to have um, strength. And that will be a float. I'm also going to make this a category as well to keep it a bit more organized. We call it unit stats. Okay, so strength, and we're going to add another one. This one will be accuracy. And that will go into unit stats as well. We're going to have another one stamina. Again, in unit stats, add. Also haste, which is what we're going to be using for this timer. Put that into you there. And then finally wisdom, uh, which can be used for how much damage their um, spells will do. So we put that in there. Okay, so the, fun the formula we're going to use for the timing of this is we're going to take the haste value out. Now when dealing with any kind of stats in your game, you need to set up some hard rules about what your stats are and what they mean. So I'm going with the rule that my all my stats, all of them, range between 0 and 255. And that's it. You can't go any higher than 255. You can't go any lower than 0. And that way I can then normalize that and understand what is going to be a good stat, what's going to be a bad stat. So the haste here, we're going to normalize this to range. And the range is going to be 0. Max is going to be 255. I then want to take this away from the number 1. So if I do this as minus float and put that into the bottom one, put one into the top, that basically flips it round. Because let's say you have a low haste, you technically would assume low haste would take longer. So you need the timer to be uh, taken into account that this lower is slower, uh, whereas larger is faster. So if it's one, so it's a, if it's a maximum, 1 minus 1 is going to give you 1. Uh, no, 1 minus uh, 1 is going to give you 0. Okay? And then max to, uh, then you'd multiply this by max time between actions, uh, and that will give you the time between the actions. So if I put in like a value of, uh, come out with a value of 0 0.2, this will come out with 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. 0 0.8 multiplied by time is going to be longer than a higher number. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to explain it, but... I can hear myself. <laughs> so we're going to take this here and multiply this by the maximum time there will be between actions. So if your character has zero stats completely in haste, what's the maximum time is going to be between these things? So I'm going to promote this to a value. Oh, not a local one. We'll promote that to a variable. And this will be max uh, action time. And this one will be we'll set to uh we'll set to three seconds. Okay. 
uh, we also want to add the minimum time to it so if this is going to be um, the maximum if this comes out at zero zero times maximum will get you zero so be instant you don't want it to be instant so here we're going to do add float and this is going to be adding just one to it okay so it's one second time between uh, the minimum max and that will go into the time there so max action time actually then we want to change this to uh, take into account this value here because if our max time is three this will actually come out as four as the maximum amount of time so to make that account for that we're going to make this one available as well so promote that to variable the min action time and i'm going to tell my max action time here to minus the min action time and that will go into there okay so if max action time is three and minus the min which is one you get two and therefore the maximum time we're going to get is going to be two plus one three which matches what our variable is here okay uh, and that's the formula we're using for that now you don't want it looping we want it to do it once uh, but we want to do want to return the return value here as a timer variable so we call this one as action timer and the reason why you want that is because you want a little progress bar to show uh, that value of the time left on the HUD. So that will call request turn. Request turn will then call the, uh, the game mode and tell it to add it to the list. So next we're going to go and add this to our um, UI, this action timer. So if we go to my party widget slot and take a look at my progress action bar here. So for this we're going to use a tick event. And the tick event is going to take the character unit. And from the unit, we're going to get the combat component. And from the combat component, we can get the action timer. Okay. Then I'm going to drag out my character action bar and do get. And from there, I'm going to do set percent. Plug that in. They won't tick because the bar needs to be changing all the time and that percentage is going to be a value that between zero and one so we need to normalize the amount of time that's left on the action timer so from in percent drag this down and do normalize to range the range max being one. Oh, not one sorry get rid of that sorry the value uh will be the action time of uh time that's elapsed so drag from there and do elapsed now go into here and the total time will be the action time uh this would be um what's it called uh remaining time there we go and we're going to add these two together to get the total time that it was originally set to we'll put that into there okay hit compile and save that Okay, so with that done, we're going to now go to our combat component and we need to call that begin battle event on a uh, function on the event begin play. So just drag out begin battle and that'll start that timer off. Okay, so we've compiled that and test that out. We should see now the bars increase like so. And when they complete, they go into this half state. Now, the reason why they do that is because it's technically being set to minus one because once the time has uh, been triggered, it goes to minus one, be basically valid but not it's cleared but not valid um it's a weird state that's in so what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to our uh, widget and we're going to tell our percentage here to change what it displays based upon the timer's remaining time so we do select float and it's we're going to take the time remaining and we're going to check if it is less than or equal to zero and that's going to go into the pick A. So if it's less than or equal to zero, we want to change A to be equal to one. So it shows the bar full. Otherwise, it'll be using the normal value that we've been getting all this time. Now, switch plate. We should see that bar fill up and stay filled up when it reaches the end. There we go. Okay, so that's going to call them to be added to that thing, which then calls the game mode turn order. So if we go to game mode, so to remind you on how this works, 
when they add the request at the end of that timer, add them to this turn order until start turn, and one of them gets told to start turn. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to start unit turn on my combat component and print string to show you what this does. So the combat component, go start unit turn and do print string. And we're going to put in the name of the unit character. So get unit character, plug that into there. And actually I'll just put in name, that's fine. Name. Go. And from there, I'm then going to hit compile and save. And we should now see whoever got hit first, even though they're all happening at the same time, one of them will get added to it. And one of you set the default. So that'd be one of the enemy characters that have been set the default there. Uh, so if I wanted to change the speeds of the characters, I go into them and then change their haste on their combat component. Over here, I can change their strength, accuracy, stamina, haste, wisdom. In haste, I'm going to change all these values here. So I'm going to change this to be a haste of um, 50 for Greystone. So Greystone should now go quicker than everyone else. Yep, goes a little bit quicker than everyone else. And you see Greystone get printed out up top here, meaning he's been added to that list first and is now executing his start turn. Excellent. Okay. So that's now the turn order working. We're now going to design the UI for our turn uh, screen. We're going to go to the UI folder, go to widgets, and we're going to create a new widget blueprint. And this is going to be the action commands. And the action commands window is going to appear in the bottom right, uh, bottom left, sorry. And it's going to be containing like the attack, magic items, and so forth. So we can get rid of the cameras panel. And in its place, we're going to put in a background blur. And I'll blur the background by five again, like so. Inside there, we're going to have a vertical box. And part of that vertical box, we're going to have a, a border. Like so. And inside that border, we're going to have some text. And that's going to be the name of the character we have uh, currently got uh, on their turn. The border here, I'm going to change the color of this brush color. I'm going to change this to black and change the alpha to 0.5. Uh, actually, let's do 0.6. There we go. Okay. And we'll add some padding around the text block here so it doesn't like look so cramped. I'm going to change the padding here to 10, maybe a bit more, 20. Yeah, there we go. And the text, we're going to change the font and change it to be uh, bold, like so. So it's going to be showing their name. So this will show like Greystone. Um, next, we're going to make it show the list of options it can do. So this isn't dynamic. This is going to be the standard list for everyone. So in here, we're going to have a button. I'm going to drag that into our vertical box. And this button here is going to be the action button. So we're going to have this, have some text in there. And the button here, we're going to change its appearance. So I'm going to change the normal look of it. I'm going to change it to uh, draw as none. And the text here, I'm going to change its padding here to be 20. And change the font to match what I've been doing. And that'd be fine like that, I think. Let's see what book looks like. Let's go to book. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm happy with that. And this one will say the action. So this will be attack. Okay. And the button here, we're going to name here to the attack command. And hit compile now to add a bit more flair to this thing and make it look a bit nicer what i'm going to do is change and make a hovered effect for this and that hovered effect is going to make it sort of have a gradient glow on it so we're going to go back to my ui folder and we're going to create a material i'm going to call this one the gradient and in here we're going to design our gradient first of all we need to change the material here to be of the user interface type and then I want to get the texture coordinate node. And from there, we want to get the gradient 
and you want to use linear gradient. And that simply will just do this. If I plug this in, it will just give you a linear gradient like this, which I find a bit too harsh. I don't want it to be as harsh as that. Uh, so I want it to be a little bit different. So what I'm going to do here is so if I divide this by two, you get half of the color gradient there. So it not it's half as white over here. Okay. Um, okay. So with that done, I also want to put in maybe a color. Uh, multiply as well just in case I want to do something with it there I'll make this a parameter so it's be like color and a shortcut for that by the way was V and left click and multiply that by our divide here and to final color also I want to make this have opacity on it as well so I'm going to change its blend mode from opaque to translucent and the opacity is going to come from this divide here drag that out Oh, you won't see nothing because the color for this by default is black. Let's change that to white. We should see our gradient. Yep, cool. I like that. So I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to go to my um, action commands. And my attack command here, I'm going to go down to the hovered section. And on hovered here, I'm going to add in that image. So type in gradient. So, and I actually want it to be actually the other way around. So what I'm going to do is just multiply the final results here by minus one. So if I do uh, one minus rather. And put that as well for the uh, bottom here. It just flips it around basically. So it's black comes white, white comes all black. Okay. Okay, and why is that looking so different? No, wait, maybe you have to put, sorry, apologies, we have to put the one minus here on the new gradient. There we go, that's what I wanted. Okay, so let's go to the action commands now. And that will now be applied to this thing. Obviously you can't test it and see it here, but if you change the normal one over to it as well, and change it draw as image, that's what it's gonna look like. Okay, when you when it's selected or hovered over. Okay. Um, if you want it to be not as stretched like that, you can clamp it and things like that if you want it to. Uh, but for now, I'm quite happy with that. I think that's pretty decent. Obviously, again, it's not going to be this wide. So bear that in mind when you're doing with this stuff. So I'm going to change that normal back to nothing. So back to num. Compile and save that. And we're going to add in the other commands now to this. So we've got attack command. I'm going to duplicate it with control W. And we're going to rename this one to magic command. And in there, the text is going to say magic. And we'll duplicate that again. And we'll call that one, uh, we'll call it techniques. I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever make the techniques, but I know some Final Fantasy games have techniques, which are like uh, abilities that aren't magic based, but still useful, like steel and things like that. Um, and then we're going to have. Um, and I'll keep that all consistent, command. And then finally, we're going to have items. I'm going to duplicate that one and call it items, command. And I'll change the text in there to say items. Okay, and because I duplicated them, it's going to copy all the st same styling that I've done before. The text block here, we want to make that variable, and that be unit name, text and save this so we need to know who this unit is uh, so go to the graph and make a new variable and that be the unit and the type for that would be unit base and 
on the pre-construct, we're going to just drag out our unit here and get their name. And we're going to set that name to our unit name text. Set text to our unit name. Okay. Uh, and that will display that correctly. Hit save on that one and close this. So the first thing we're going to do then is to get that displayed on the screen is go to the combat component and let's go to the uh, start unit turn here. And what I'm going to do first of all is determine whether or not this is a player controlled character because if it's player controlled we want to show the menu if it's not player controlled we don't want to show a menu. So let's make a new boolean. I'll call that is uh, player. Actually no, what we can do if, we, if I delete this if we drag the unit character out and get the class we can determine whether or not it's a party unit or not. So um, is child of and put in party unit base. And that must mean it's a char player character. So I'm going to put that into a branch and plug that in. Brilliant. Okay, so now we're going to create that widget that we just made, create widget. And we're going to create the uh, action commands. And for that we do need to plug in the unit so let's go back to our action commands widget closed there go to the graph and make that unit there editable and exposed on spawn back on our combat component if i refresh this plug in unit now I'll take the unit character okay now i will want to store this uh, menu as a promote uh, as a variable so I'm going to promote that to a variable and this will be called actions command window and then we're going to add that to the viewport okay so when we're adding this to a viewport because at the moment it isn't got a canvas panel on it we actually do want to put a canvas panel on it because uh, otherwise it'll stretch it across the whole entire thing so in here we're going to go to design view we go to the background blur at top and right click wrap with canvas panel then i want to click on the background blur and tick size to content and i can see how big it's going to be if i did that i do want it to be a bit longer so i'm going to turn off size to content and just make it manually bigger like so okay the alignment for this will be x0 and y1 and i want to change the anchor of that to the bottom left that and I'll give it the same sort of indentation I've given the other side of the screen as well so minus uh, 50 or sorry 50 in the X and then minus 50 in the Y pop it up like so okay so that window will now appear for our character I'll and save that okay so let's see if that works in our game here so you should see graystones one appear and there's graystone and you can see how we can hover over the menu options and it gives us those options okay so at the moment these buttons obviously don't do anything um we'll work on those in the next few episodes um what i might want to do as well is add animations to this as well so it slides in doesn't just pop up um so we can work on that one too but as you can see it looks quite nice if you go full screen we get the quite a nice view there to make it smaller make it different look so you can totally do whatever you want for this okay um, that's it and there we have it we have successfully created a menu for our characters each having an attack magic technique and item functions in the next episode in episode 5 we're going to work on a camera system so this camera system is going to activate when we go into the character's turns so as we go into a turn the camera will change to its nice rotating camera style and then allow you to pick the option you want to pick so join us on the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan Laley. thank you to all my patrons and youtube members for their continued support in the channel and me Thanks again for everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.